Mm-hmm. Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. I have a few jokes while people join in. Uh, please feel free to make comments and uh, comment and mention that you're here and where you're from. I'm going to kind of adjust this a little bit, make sure I'm not super tilted. And if you do happen to notice what's different in the background, you can mention that too. What did the big chimney say to the little chimney? You're too young to smoke. I don't know if that's a good joke or not. <laughs> I like it though. Uh, a book just fell on my head. I've only got my shelf to blame. Oh, we got Jim and Twyla, we got Rick and Melinda probably. So welcome and hello. Why did the fish cross the sea? To get to the other tide. Why did, or what did the baby corn say to the mama corn? Where's popcorn? I just got hit by a rented car. It hurts. Everyone's making laugh noises. Let's see here. Velcro. What a ripoff. Hertz went out of business. Oh, I just heard Hertz went out of business. So yeah, it's not that funny anymore. It's a little too serious. Let's see. Oh, this might be kind of interesting. In- instead of the John, I call my toilet the gym. It sounds better when I say I go to the gym first thing in the morning. I went shopping for some camouflage trousers, but I couldn't find any. I wonder who else is there. I see some more people. Oh, I see Joyce. Oh, I see Gail. Gail says hello. Hello, to- hello Gail. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, this will be my last one, I think. I think we got enough people that I can start. My friend told me he had the body of a Greek god. I told him Buddha was not Greek. Oh, hey, Fisks. There's Randy and Miranda. I think they said Randy and Miranda. So, we have our study tonight. Uh, We've been looking at the qualities of love. But we're going to start tonight. If you notice, I have, you know, it's mirrored to you, I know, but these are Oreo cookies. They're cinnamon bun Oreo cookies. Very delicious. Quite good. And I have one here that I'd like to take a bite of. I'd like to eat. Very delicious cookies, as I mentioned. So very, very good. What situations do you feel the need to get even? To take revenge? I just had my cookie snatched from my hand. So does that give me the justification or the right? Or should I get revenge? Should I be even? Should I try to seek revenge for this this injustice that's been done to me? So again, in the comments, uh, please mention uh, what situations do you find yourself in at times where you feel the need to get even? Uh, The times where you feel like you just got to get revenge. Like, oh, I got to teach them. I got to show them. Uh, how they did this wrong and why they did this. Uh, some things that I thought of is, I don't know, it always comes to mind because I don't really drive a lot. So uh, I, I think to the people that I've driven with when I was younger and they always seem to be really mad, but traffic. Traffic seems to be a way that somebody cuts them off. They feel that they just got to lay on the horn. It's not the polite, the polite little beep beep just in case somebody did something wrong or you, you left your lights or they're always on, I guess, but um, you know, you didn't signal or something. Uh, Gail says when you're angry, so you predispose mood, you know, the mood that you're in, uh, you can feel the need to get even if you're in that mood already and something happens to you. Uh, I don't know, if somebody if somebody does something to you, uh, again, this hasn't happened to me since probably elementary school, and it's probably my own fault, but getting punched in the face, you know, or maybe you got stood up, maybe you had an appointment with somebody, and they stood you up for no reason at all. You made plans, you went to the place. This happened to me, too, when I was younger. And uh, I went and I had a meeting with a friend. We were going to go see a movie. And I even went and bought tickets and got everything ready. And I was waiting for him out the door and the movie started. Kind of 15 minutes into the movie, I said, oh, I guess he's not showing up. And I was all mad and took off. Uh, Joyce said, uh, danger. Oh, if you want one, you'll eat more. She's warning me about the cookies. So very wise words. I don't want one anyway. Uh, You're lucky someone saved you from eating it. You might feel the need to get even, but sometimes it works out to the better for us. So I guess that's if you don't get even. If you choose not to, sometimes it'll work out better. Uh, Melinda says she can't think of anything specific, but I know I have wanted to say I told you so at times. So that may be a form of revenge or getting even. 
And that is very true. I've, I've often struggled with that, like seeing people, I guess, essentially kind of getting their just desserts for a situation, like maybe they did something wrong, or maybe they're really um, arrogant in a certain situation, but then they get kind of put in their place. And you're like, ah, I told them so, you know, like, ah, they deserve that. You know, so it's that feeling of getting even. Uh, one situation that I had when I first started my company, uh, it was about nine years ago, and I was just starting out, so I didn't really know a lot about having my own business, having my own company. Um, and I talked to an experienced engineer. He's the guy who kind of got me on the track of possibly starting my own company. And I asked him, what happens if you don't get paid? So, uh, you know, with the company, it's, it's not like your job where you go work and your employer pays you. If you have your own company, you have to try to get money from the people that ask you to do a service. Uh, so my company is an engineering company, so they would ask me to do a design and I'd say, okay, that'd be the certain sum of money. And then what if they don't pay? Like what's stopping them from not paying? Um, and one thing that he said, which still stuck with me and it, I found it really wise. Uh, he's an older guy, so I had a lot of experience. He said, don't worry about it and just never do business with them again. And I was like, so you don't try to chase the money down. You don't try to find it and get it. And he said, well, not really. Like, you, you know, you, you try to do what you can, but if, if you know that they're not going to pay, just let it go and move on. He said, it's too much stress to be hassling people and trying to chase this money. It's much better use of your time to just forget about it and just remember not to do business with them again. So I kind of learned from that mistake, but just move on. Uh, and I thought that was very interesting, a good comment. Uh, my mom gave me a comment here. Sometimes we blame ourselves, so we think it is our fault. So... Yeah, sometimes we blame blame ourselves for things and we think it's our fault for the situation. Uh, one thing that actually happened in my life, uh, in the company, later on, I took that part of advice and I said, uh, I, I learned from that. I was like, okay, so if it's that much. But then I, I always thought, okay, for a smaller sum of money in the grand scheme of things, it's probably not a big deal. So it might be kind of easy. But we had a client a few years ago, it was kind of during that, that recession time and it was one of our major clients it was accompanying a lot of our time and they went bankrupt so out of business and we lost a significant amount of money uh, and we tried to chase some of that money uh, but a lot of that we actually lost paying the lawyer to help us chase it you know so it was a lot of stress and time and it took probably three years for it to really be resolved after they went bankrupt so after they were gone and kind of out of commission you know, it took about three years of time and effort and a little bit of stress, you know, to deal with this. But it, it was still, I didn't really feel like I had to get even, but it was one of those situations where these, these things happen and they kind of stress you out and you might feel like you have to kind of do your part in exacting revenge or finding out some sort of way to get even with the situation. And again, that might even be getting even for yourself. If you think it's your fault and you want to kind of get even with yourself. Like you have to treat yourself badly because you did this thing. So that's essentially guilt, I suppose. If you go to 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8. So 1 Corinthians 13, starting in verse 4. This is the passage we've been looking at, and it's essentially that ingredient list of love. So it's the qualities of love, the way love is described in the scriptures. This is agape love. Uh, there's a few different words in Greek for love. Uh, we just have the single word love, and they had... A, uh, four, four words to describe different types of love. This one is agape, so it's that essentially active goodwill to those who are around you. So 1 Corinthians 13, starting in verse 4, says, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So this evening, we're looking at the, the quality where love keeps no record of wrongs. So very interesting verse. Uh, sometimes we feel the need to get even. Sometimes we feel uh, that we need to keep a checklist of all the wrongs that were committed against us. Uh, one version, I like the way the New American Standard Version translates this, and they say, love does not take into account a wrong suffered. So somebody does something against you, or you're uh, you know, harmed in some way, in some sense, uh, that could be in any way, not just physically, but it could be mentally, they could have uh, 
caused you trouble in some way or criticized you or did something bad to you. And you don't take that account, or you don't take that wrong into account. You don't uh, consider that wrong. You don't worry about it. And it's very interesting to describe love that way. It really comes down to kind of the attitude that you must have in these situations. Uh, we've discussed before how love is something that is or should not be dependent on your outward circumstances, depending on whether or not you think somebody deserves your love, you give it to them. Uh, Jesus died on the cross for everybody. He, and, and there's a lot of people in the world that don't deserve that. Maybe, maybe everybody don't, doesn't deserve that to a certain extent. But he still did it. He showed the love regardless of the people he's showing the love to. Uh, we got Brenda here and we got Carl. Hey, Brenda and Carl. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out, though, it doesn't mean that we cannot be smart on how we deal with people. But the idea here is that attitude of not keeping a record of wrongs. Uh, that's one thing that, um, again, I've been taught ever since I was a kid, is that if, if somebody does something wrong against you, and maybe you discuss it, maybe you discuss this wrong thing that something happened and you come to a resolution, that's water under the bridge and you move on with that. And then once you're moving on with that, you don't bring that back up again. You don't say, oh, you remember one year ago when you stood me up when you did this or you did that and bring that back into that conversation when you have something that you want to, a point you want to make, you know, to that person. If we're loving, we shouldn't be bringing these things up that are already resolved. Uh, we keep that record or we don't keep a record of wrongs that are, are sold against us are done against us. Uh, love doesn't keep a tally of rights and wrongs uh, for the point of how someone should act in a certain situation. If, if we're going to show them or act to them a certain way, it shouldn't be dependent on whether or not they've done a bunch of good or bad things to us. Uh, that's that perfect uh, example of agape love. So another question I'd like to see if people can respond in the comments is what characteristic might somebody have if they do hold grudges? If you do keep record of wrongs, you hold on to things. You remember the thing that somebody did to you 10 years ago, and you still hold on to that, and you're angry about that, and you don't want to attack that person again. Uh, I haven't experienced this in my life, but I've watched it on movies, which is, I don't, know, I don't know if that counts or not, but I do see it happen in movies where you see that example of the, you know, the, the father and son or, or the you know, mother and, and daughter, and they haven't spoken to each other for 15 years because something happened when they're when they're younger 15 years ago and they're mad at each other and they don't want to pick up the phone and then there's usually that third person that comes in there and, and talks sense into one of them and says well come on why don't you just call them and usually by the end of the movie somebody picks up the phone and it's a symbolic thing where they're reaching out to make contact with their loved one and kind of get over that grudge so what characteristics might somebody have if they do hold grudges uh, what characteristic might you see in that person uh, some things that I thought of is you'd probably see somebody who might be more stressed out uh, than normal or what you would expect. Somebody who tends to be worried or angry about something a lot. Uh, got something over here. Uh, oh, they whine about it. Okay, so they whine about they whine about what happened to them 10 years ago. Oh, this person did this to me and they keep talking about it and they can't let it go. So that's really hanging on to, to something that might uh, that was wrong to them, some wrong that was committed against them. Uh, it can be changed. It, it changed people if they hold grudges. Yeah, so it does change people. If, if people hold grudges, it does change you as a person. Uh, if you hold on to it for a long period of time, it starts to almost mold your character in a, in a certain way and not, not a good way. Uh, Joyce says bitterness. Uh, you have that kind of bitter attitude, you know, where you have that sour face all the time or you're almost just expecting somebody to do something wrong to you or looking for ways to complain about something or another. Uh, you know, certain ways where uh, these are those attitudes that you can have if you hang on to these wrongs. If you just remember every single thing that somebody did against you throughout your whole life, that's all you're thinking about, you're going to be uh, not super happy. It's going to kind of infect you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a hard time in your mind. Uh, and that's where, like Gail says, it can change you. Uh, if you go to Leviticus chapter 19, we're going to go to the Old Testament because I think this verse is a really good verse where it ties in uh, having grudges and also the, the good quality of love. And this is a verse that Jesus actually quoted in the New Testament, and it'll probably seem familiar to you when we read it. So Leviticus chapter 19, we're going to, yeah, chapter 19, we're going to read verse 18. So Leviticus 19 verse 18 it says, Do not seek revenge 
or bear a grudge against anyone among your people. But love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So love your neighbor as yourself. Probably sounds a little bit familiar. Uh, this is when Jesus was discussing with, uh, with a group of people in the New Testament. And the, he, uh, they asked him, what is the greatest commandment? You know, what is this greatest commandment? He says, love the Lord your God, with all your heart, soul, and mind. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. So this is something that Jesus quoted as he was teaching people. And I like how in the first part of uh, this verse is how he says, do not seek revenge do, or bear a grudge against anyone among your people. So don't seek revenge or bear a grudge. And that's very wise advice. Uh, that's another thing that you'll recognize if you start um, looking and trying to find, like reading self-help books and those sorts of things about how to be joyful and how to be happy in life. That is one of the main things that is listed in there often is don't hold grudges. Make sure you can forgive people. Uh, show that love. Show that love for people. So I like in Leviticus 19.18 where he has, do not seek revenge, do not bear a grudge. Instead, love your neighbor as yourself. He gives you that positive action to do in place of that negative action. If you go to Ephesians chapter 4, this gets more into that attitude again of when we show love, what is one of those things that we should do in place of keeping a record of wrongs? So Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to read verses 31 and 32. So Ephesians 4, starting in verse 31. It says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as God, Christ God forgave you. So if you look at the first part of this verse, in verse 31, it says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Sounds like a lot of the qualities of somebody who might be holding on to grudges, somebody who keeps that record of wrongs. They're going to be bitter, as mentioned by Joyce. Uh, you're going to have that rage and anger. If you're constantly thinking about how everybody's treated you badly and you're holding on to that grudge, you're going to, be, you're going to have that anger inside of you. Uh, you might want to be more brawling and slander, try to catch, get that revenge, you know, try to fight about it, try to show how you're right and they're wrong and, and always bring it up and always have that fight. Uh, malice, you're going to have that, that attitude of, of, I don't know, ill feelings towards those people, you know, if you're holding on to these things. And then in verse 32, he switches to what, you know, those are the things we should not do and what are the things that we should do instead. Be compassionate to one another and forgive each other, just as Christ God forgave you. Uh, again, we have Jesus as that example to show how we are to have that love to anyone, regardless of what they show to us. And we are to forgive in a similar way where we're to forgive like, like Christ forgave us. And it's one of those things where really we should just do our best to let it go. If somebody does something wrong, uh, if somebody stole my cookie, I can let it go. I can move on with life. Uh, if somebody didn't pay me because of my, my in my company, uh, I can let it go. I can move on with life. It's something that I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't be like holding on to for the rest of my life. And one of the results, or the positive results from that, is that I will be happier as a result, and anybody will be happier as a result too. If you're not holding on to this. Um, yeah, Gail brought up a good point. What do you do if the wrongdoer keeps doing you wrong, like continues to keep doing you wrong? Uh, very challenging. Again, the instruction doesn't change from the scriptures. He's telling us what we need to do in this situation. We need to show love. And I think Gail has a really good tip here. Uh, there's so many things that happen to us that are out of our control, and we can't change that person who might be doing these things to us. She said prayer helps, and that is so, so true that we can put our prayers and petitions on God. We can take those things that are out of our control. We can't control them. We can't make them change. Uh, they're going to do what they do regardless of what we do in response, but we can always pray. We can always put those petitions to God and, and put it in his hands so that we can essentially let that go. We don't have to have that hanging over our heads you know, for a long period of time or maybe for the rest of our lives. So another question that I'm gonna ask if people can respond in the comments. How can we let go of grudges? So kind of more of a practical response. How can you actually let go of these things? Because it is challenging, it's tough to, to let these things go, especially if somebody does something malicious against you and there's no sense of them being repentant at all. They are unrepentant for whatever reason, they might be um, might be doing it maliciously. They're actually out to get you, you know, and they're trying to make you feel bad. 
Uh, like bullies do that in a sense where a lot of the time they're trying to just bring you down a few notches to make themselves feel good, but they are doing something to you and they're doing it on purpose. Um, I think last week or maybe the week before we discussed that idea of, of you not being the center of the universe. Sometimes it feels like everybody's doing something to you or against you, but sometimes they might not have any idea that they did something wrong. Uh, but regardless, what do you do? How can we let go of grudges? Uh, Gail says, uh, should be wise and humble enough to not to fall into the same situation. Uh, so that's really true. That's learning from things, learning from the situation. She said it can be very hard sometimes. Uh, it is true that we are to keep no record of wrongs, but we are to learn from our example, like learn from our, our, our experiences and the things that we've gone through. Uh, like I say with the, the, the person who doesn't pay in my company, I don't simply, oh, okay, yeah, you're not going to pay this one. Yeah, let's do this next project together. And yeah, yeah, I'll do all the work up front and, and you can pay me when you're ready. You know, you, you have to have a little bit of smartness about that. And it's one of those things where um, we can learn from our example or learn from our experiences. To show love is something where we do have that attitude of forgiveness. We want to forgive these people. Uh, Twyla had a really good point where she says, give it to God and let go. That's again, putting that, uh, those things that are out of our control. We can't control other people's responses. And we can give it to him. We can just let him control it, and then we can let it go. And that's that peace that surpasses all understanding that we can have as Christians. Um, some other things that I thought of, of ways that we could possibly let go of grudges, because it is a challenge uh, to do this. And one thing you could do is understand that a, an offense was committed. Um, you feel it. You do feel this wrong. Sometimes as people... Uh, where something's done to you, sometimes you think that you deserve it. And sometimes you don't think that it was a justifiable wrong. You have to accept that, okay, this person did do something bad to me. Again, for whatever reason, something bad happened to you and you feel bad about it. It was something that was wrong to you. You have to be able to understand that, okay, it's not, it's not my fault, you know, or, or it might not be my fault. At least you can recognize that and look into that. But understand that this offense was committed. Understand that it happened. Okay, it happened and acknowledge it because... Um, again, we can sometimes feel that, that we deserve it and we just try to brush it away and just pretend it's going to go away and we don't deal with it. Uh, that's essentially having those bad feelings and stuffing them down and keep on stuffing until they explode one day. Uh, we still have to deal with these things. We have to understand that an offense was committed. Uh, remember, again, keep in mind and always remember that love and forgiveness is a gift to yourself. Uh, it can be a gift to the other person in a certain sense, but it is truly a gift to yourself. If you can let that grudge go, you are going to feel much better as a, as a result. Uh, you can let that go and go on with life, and you're going to have a, a more joyful life, a more peaceful life if you can do this. If you can follow what Jesus is telling us in the scriptures to be compassionate, forgive one another, we're going to have more joy in our life as a result. It's a gift to us. Uh, the only person who is being harmed by you being angry and you holding on a grudge is essentially yourself. You're the one doing all the damage to yourself. Uh, Tina says, people who treat you badly uh, constitute a modern day enemy. That's true. Uh, if you want to say, love your enemies. And that's what Jesus said is to love your enemies. And that's, uh, that's one sense of an enemy is people who treat you badly. Uh, you can see them as uh, that enemy because they are against you. And we can show that love to them. And we don't have to hold on to those grudges or keep that record of wrongs. Um, one thing to remember is forgiveness doesn't mean that you condone the action where you say that, yes, it's okay that you treated me that way. Uh, you're not doing that when you forgive. Uh, you know, forgiveness goes a lot further than that. But if you're letting go of that grudge and you have that attitude of forgiveness and compassion and try to hopefully understand where that person's coming from or maybe where their situation is, um, you can hopefully let that grudge go and say, okay, that happened. I'm going to move on. I'm not going to let this bother me. I'm going to pray. I'm going to give it to God, put it in his hands and have that peace that surpasses all understanding. You can do that. You can uh, let that go because really that anger that you might have or that grudge, that feeling that you have burning inside of you is really only hurting yourself. Uh, you're not, you know, especially if the person is being malicious, they almost want to see you angry. They want to see you, um, they want to see you suffer. They want to see you go through this because that's why they're mean to you or that might be the reason they're mean to you. But it's one of those things where they are going to kind of revel in that in a sense if they're malicious against you. So if you let that go, you're helping yourself. You're not kind of succumbing to their needs and their wishes. If they do something against you that they have no idea they did it, but you still let it go, you're still going to have that 
uh, idea of peace and you're not, it's not going to be hurting you. It's not going to kind of eat you up inside. Uh, Brenda says uh, her mom kept her or kept telling her to pray and not to bother with uh, who is right or wrong. And she knew she'd have to deal with the people in her life that were a challenge. Uh, and that's what we should be doing. We should make sure that we go to God with these things because, again, those things that are out of our control, other people's responses, the things they do to us, we can't control those things, but we can pray for those people. And we can pray that we can get through it, that we can learn from it, and that we can release that grudge and kind of let it go. Uh, one thing that helps me quite a bit in these sorts of situations is I remember that everyone is flawed, uh, including myself. And we can show love to these people in the hopes that eventually they'll come around. You just keep that attitude of trying to help, act of goodwill, trying to be that good example. And if you do that, you can better, more easily let go of that grudge. If you can say, well, they have their situation, they're flawed just like me. I've, I've done things to people that I regret and that I wish I never did. And I'm hoping that those people don't hold grudges against me because there's times that I've done something and I've moved on with life and I don't even realize that I did it until like later. And so there's no resolution. It's kind of done. And I hope that they're not holding a grudge against me. And if I remember that when somebody does something to me, I can think, okay, maybe they didn't realize it or maybe there's a reason they did this. Maybe they just had a bad day. Maybe they just came out of a situation that was really harsh and terrible and they're just simply taking it out on me. I can hopefully let those things go. And like Brenda says, letting go is very hard. Uh, it's very hard to let go for these things, uh, but that is where we have that, that aspect of prayer, an aspect of, of giving these things to God and putting those petitions on Him. But that idea of love, not keeping a record of wrongs, is something that we can really learn from. Uh, it is very hard to not hold grudges. If somebody does something, especially if it's malicious to you, it's hard to not hold on to that. But with this attitude of love and doing our best to be forgiving and looking for those ways that we can forgive the person, uh, making sure prayers in our life so we put those prayers and petitions on him, on God, then we can hopefully let go of those grudges. We can be understanding and understand that these people in the world, just like us, are flawed. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to do things that are against us and that might offend us. And we can hopefully understand and let it go and move on with life and try to help as much as possible and maybe put our energy, instead of putting it into anger and trying to seek revenge, we can put our energy in trying to help, trying to be a good example, trying to show that even though you're treating me badly, I'm going to be nice to you. They might be evil to you and you can be good in return. And if we put our energy into that, hopefully we can help them turn around. We can help them realize, you know, where they have some things to change and we can hopefully be that good example to them. Uh, let's close our Bible study in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening that we can study your word and look at the qualities of love and look especially at the quality of love not keeping a record of wrongs. And I pray that we can have the strength to do this. Uh, I know it's a difficult thing for us to do and I pray that you can give us that strength and that we can rely on you through the aspect of prayer to put the things that are out of our control and those things that might happen to us that we do have no control over on you and pray for our enemies and pray for those people that uh, may persecute us or do wrong to us and pray that we can do that so that we can have that peace that surpasses understanding that we could put these troubles and these cares that are out of our control on you and rely on you to help us with that so that we can let go of that grudge and and have that attitude of love and compassion and forgiveness and put it to practice in our lives so that we can be that example to the people that are around us again i thank you for giving us the message and giving us the strength to carry it out in our lives uh, in jesus name we pray amen Hey, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and uh, you might even want to put in the comments what's different in the background. I change the background every week and I see if people notice. So you may or may not. There's actually a couple of things. It's kind of a trick. You might see the obvious one, but miss the not so obvious one. But thanks for listening and we'll see you next week. Be safe, be well, and God bless.